Hey friends, welcome back to Sparkle and Trade. Um, this, if this is your first time here, welcome. We are glad to have you guys. So today, the video that we're going to be talking about today is what to do before you make your first trade. There are so many of, of you out there that are still trading in your live account or your SIM account or with paper money, and you are afraid to make that first live trade. So today we're going to be talking about what you need to do to prepare yourself to make that first trade. It's time, sis. It's time to get off the sidelines. It's time to jump in. You are ready. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> so, okay. So um, I wanted to do this video because making that first trade is a big step. It's a big step for a lot of people. And it's something that you shouldn't take lightly. You know, this is your, your money, your hard earned cash that you have to, that you're going to be putting into the stock market. So you want to make sure that you are ready, you are prepared, and that you know what to expect. And this is my, I'm going to give you guys five, my five tips on what you should do before you make your first trade. Number one, understanding the difference between sim and live and what that could possibly do to you. First of all, if you've been involved in any type of trading, and this is this is a channel, I guess, for newbie traders, but if you're an experienced trader, then um, you should already know many of this stuff. But if you're a newbie trader and you're like, I haven't made my first trade yet, but I really want to do that soon here, these are some tips that I would like to give. So we have the SIM account and then we have our live account, right? So a great way to practice, if you are just learning to trade, let's say you signed up for Terry's course, which by the way, I use the Invest with Terry uh, course uh, to learn trading. I included the link in my profile bio. If you're interested in learning how to trade, that's the course that I reference a lot on this channel, just because that's the way I got trained. Um, and I tell everybody, go get, go get trained and then come back <laughs> or none of this stuff is going to make any sense to you. But anyway, what I would do is number one, understand the difference between sim and live. Obviously, it's fake money, real money, right? Sim and live. But when you trade with your sim um, and you get into a trade with your sim, it is a great way to learn how to push the button. So like if you need to know, okay, how do I get into the trade and go through the little steps of getting actually in the trade and pushing the send button to activate the trade and then seeing how somebody your, your trade gets activated and different things like that then that's a great way for your sim account you, you can push the buttons you know what kind of how to maneuver through the screens and different things like that um and then also reading the results so if you the trade went well you could see okay this is what it would look like if the trade went well this is how much money i'll make this is the if there's fees involved you'll see that calculated in there and um and, and, and more. And then, and then one of her, I want to answer this question really quickly because I had a, somebody on my uh, comments ask, like, what is the requirements for trading? Like, what is the equipment that you needed? And I mean, and I told him I'll answer that in this video. You really don't need that much. <laughs> All you really need is a computer and or a mobile phone. Most of my trading I do on my phone because I like to see the trade. Um, you know, there's some people that have like multiple, the multi, uh, you know, that's fancy. You know, it's fancy. You know, they like all the screens. You don't necessarily need that, at least not with the investment theory way. I don't know. Maybe they're doing some type of different strategy where they have to look at, and that might be people that have like multiple trades. So they might have like, four, five or more trades, and then you need to keep an eye on all of those trades, then I could see how they would want to have all the screens and all the computers and people make trading look so complicated. And I'm just like, y'all just get a simple, a simple system and, you know, get a, go, go with the broker that has an app and that you can look at it on your desktop. So trade station is a great one. I like the trade station app. They also have the desktop version if you're a PC user. If you're a Mac user like myself, then you, you can't really use the TradeStation desktop. Or they do have a web version, but like I said, I don't like it. It's not my favorite. Some people love it. Whatever your preference is, all you really just need is a broker that has the desktop version and or the, the mobile app. Me personally, I use, this is how I trade. 
because I got uh, trained on TradeStation, I use TradeStation for my technical analysis. I just, it's something about the way I was trained and seeing it the exact same way that she sees it, her charting, the way she charts and all of the steps that she, but anyway, I use the TradeStation app. And it's like I, like I was saying, I prefer to use the app that, um, that I was trained on. It's something about seeing the way she did it. It really helps me to do my technical analysis correctly. Um, like I said, they have a desktop version. So don't want to spend too much time on that. I did do a video about my favorite trading platform and I go into detail on how the reason why I chose those two and how I use both of them. Um, so just go look for that video. But today, I, again, I really want to talk to you guys about five things you, you should do before you make your first trade. Just wanted to answer that question like I told them I would do. So anyway, like I said, your SIM account, when you are in your SIM account, it is great as a great way, like I said, to, to maneuver, to learn the platform, to learn um, different things that you need to do to get in and out of a trade. The live account, in my opinion, and everybody is different, y'all. So this is just me, okay? In my opinion, when you trade in your live account, that is um, when training really begins. Because such a big portion of trading is emotional, it is very hard to manage your emotions with money that doesn't even belong to you. So if you have $50,000 in a SIM account, or let's say a million dollars in a SIM account, that feels so unrealistic. It's like you're not really attached to it. And a big part of trading is being knowing what you're going to do and managing yourself to something you're attached to like that has a deep connection to you because you work for it or you have plans for that or you you know that's the part of trading that really is the training part of it the trade tr stock trading i think has the most to do with you managing your emotions because um you there is no magic formula that will guarantee that a trade will go in the direction that you think it will go in there anything can happen at any moment and it can all go different different ways so i just want you to be ready for that so number one know the difference between sim and live um i always say start with something small in your live account so like if you're like okay i have a thousand dollars to trade with just start trading with like a hundred dollars to start trading you know just trade do enough for a hundred dollars, get in, feel it, right? Get, okay, this is how it feels to be in a trade, like monitor yourself. So some people, they find that their stress levels go up or their anxiety goes up because they're kind of like clenching, hoping everything goes well. You can't live like that every day. If you gonna try, if you gonna be clenched, like you gotta, <laughs> you gotta like know yourself. So what I would say when you make your first trade with that hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, like write down the different emotions that you feel. Like like throughout the day, write down I feel stressed. Write down I feel excited. Write down like write down the different emotions that come up so that you will. have have a plan when you're ready to make a big trade because right now we're just trying to get you used to trading and managing your emotions okay so get into the trade start writing down the different emotions you feel okay at the beginning of the day i got a trade at 10 a.m and i felt like this <sighs> right there, write that down um and then say i checked on my trade at noon and i felt like this my trade started going in the direction I want. I started feeling good. I said, I'm going to be a millionaire. Y'all going to, you know, ride the, whatever. But then, then uh, two o'clock came and said it went in the wrong direction. And I started feeling like a failure. Whatever it is, write it down because you, you will need to ask yourself, what am I going to do when I start to feel these things? So number two, so number one, know what sim is for and like i said getting out of trade getting used to the platforms that you use whatever reading the results etc live real trading begins start with something small and then write down your emotions number two now um a stop and terry teaches you this of course a stop is a part of risk management and it helps you it helps 
you manage your emotions and it is great risk management. But what a stop is, it gets you out of a trade uh, if it goes in the direction that you don't want it to go into. And she gives you a formula and everything in her course on how to determine what that is and how to do it. But you need to make sure you have that in every trade. Don't ever get into a trade without a stop. I'm telling you, the day that I have my, my risk, um, my max loss, I have a video about um, experiencing max loss on an options trade. I took out my stop order, y'all, because I was convinced that this was going to turn around. And I mean, I'm telling you, I've done like so many mistakes. I like, <laughs> I went head first into trading and I learned it a lot in a short period of time because because that's just how I am but you don't have to be like me and lose to learn okay but watch your trade throughout the day putting your stop to make sure that if it does go in a direction and you're not looking at it um that you're fine it's you like okay what's well, gonna get me out you know and then also follow up as often as you can but I have found that if I'm like this, like all day long watching my trade, like that is just not a good quality of life, y'all. It's not very um, free. You feel almost bound to your phone. And I just want you to be prepared to do other things. So say, okay, I'm going to have a trading day, but to make this day productive, I'm also going to do boop, 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 boop. And no matter what happens with my trade, I'm going to get these other things done too because you can get caught up in just watching your trade to where your whole day goes by and you're like, what happened? Like the whole day went by, you know, do your trade, get into your trade, follow up as often as you can. Definitely if it's a big trade, you want to follow up a few times a day or, you know, once a couple, a couple times uh, every few hours. But like, if you have your stop order in, like, don't get caught up with like this whole, like it, it can become like a prison of just watching your trade. And I don't think that's, that's a good quality of life. So just be prepared for that. Number three, um, prepare your mind to lose it all. So like not, the, not your whole trade. So if you have a big trade, so let's say you have a big trade, prepare your mind to lose whatever your risk management is. So that whatever you have decided, my stock is going to be, and like I said, Terry teaches you how to calculate all that. Whatever you have decided that number to be, um, prepare yourself to lose that amount. So what this, okay, I'm in a hundred dollar trade. I'm gonna, I'm preparing my mind to lose $50. Okay, um, I'm in a thousand dollar trade. I'm preparing my mind to lose $250. Okay, so ask yourself if I do, if it does go in the direction that I don't want it to go into, how will I feel if I lose this amount? And then how will I bounce back? So how would I feel if I lose this amount? And then how am I going to bounce back? Um, you have to prepare yourself for that because what will end up happening is, you know, I have seen trades go up and all my excitement is there. I'm feeling good. And then it goes in a wrong direction. Like I should have got out and I didn't. I, I don't know why I didn't get out. You know, it's greed, like all these things that you don't think you have to deal with comes up like greed, like get a couple more dollars, you know, it's, it's all these things that come up that you don't even realize comes up when you're trading and you realize you have to deal with it. Okay. I have to deal with this, this feeling that I can get more. What am I going to do when I feel like, man, if we went up that much, I can get more. No get out just get out the trade I can't tell you how many days I was like boop 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 and I said well is it better and he went Phew. and I'm like Dang. like it, it I just you know should have got out thought to myself oh it's gonna go a little bit more and they didn't and so I had to prepare myself for that I have my stop my risk management in there so it won't do too much don't hurt me too bad um so yeah, and then number four, do your technical analysis. I know this is number four, it should have been like number one or two, but the reason why I put it this first is because you just have to prepare your mind and your emotions first 
do your technical analysis and your risk management is a part of managing your emotions. So do all the work, take the time. Terry walks you through it in her course, exactly how to do your technical analysis, exactly how to do your risk management, the formulas and everything that you need. She has it in the course. If you did everything you did, if you did everything you are supposed to do, calculated it all, got into the trade, prepared yourself, understood that I'm okay, you know, if anything happens and I'm going to bounce back regardless, um, then you can confidently say, I got into that trade doing what I, what I should have done. I've got into that trade confidently feeling like, okay, I did everything I could do to make sure that this trade was a good trade. And if it doesn't go in the direction that I want to go to, it's not because I didn't do the work. It just, the trade didn't go in the direction that I thought it was going to go in for whatever reason. And trades do that. You can't help it. Like nobody has like, like a magic wand to make it all go the direction that it should go into. You can only do the best you can with your technical analysis. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't uh, allow yourself to think like, maybe this is not for me. No, I mean, maybe it is for you. And, and, and maybe you just got to learn yourself enough to learn your lesson. And that leads me to the last one, number five. Learn from every loss and every win. The reason why I'm still in trading, not, it's not because every trade went my way. It is not because, um, you know, I mastered something. Um, the reason why I'm still in trading is I have decided to learn from every loss and every win. What, what did you learn from that loss? I had a loss last week. I learned from it. Um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't have max losses anymore because I learned from that. <laughs> That will never happen again. When you experience one max loss on an option trade, I mean, you, you should never have to experience. I'm trying to say, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> but when you have, you will, you will quickly realize like, I don't want to pass that mountain ever again. I don't need to go around that mountain ever again. And so I, um, I've learned from that though. I knew what I did wrong. Emotion. It was an emotional decision. And I didn't realize I'm an emotional person by nature. So if you're like me, you're an emotional person by nature, there are some days that you just should not trade. If I know I'm emotional on a day or something is pulling at my heartstrings outside of technical analysis, like I said, the Afghanistan situation, um, don't trade just save your money. And, and I think what a lot of times people have a fear of fear missing out. Well, I'm going to miss out on making a thousand dollars today. I'm going to miss out on making $500 today, or I'll miss out making $10,000 today, which that's my next goal is to make $10,000 in a day. But, um, you guys, if you are there, you know, if you're like, okay, I, I don't know if you're there, if you're at that point where you're like, I'm emotional, I'm, my heart is tied to something. I'm really like, I, or, or the other, the other emotion that I want you to watch out for is I really need this trade to go well. That's one of the emotions where I'm like, take a step back because if this, if you're like, I gotta have, I need to grow this account. Like you're so like, this has to go right today. Take a step back because nine times out of 10, when you needed to go in the direction you are wanted to go in, you usually make choices that aren't really healthy. Definitely like if you're like, okay, I have a, a income goal and I need to make this income goal. And this one trade will get me to my income goal. Take a step back. Actually, you might want to have accountability partner on those situations that have somebody say that also knows trading. I just need a second eye to look at this because I'm in a position that I really need this to happen and this one trade will get me there. However, I'm really like hungry for it to where I'm not sure if I'm in the right mindset. That's a good indicator that you need second eyes on a trade. Um, 
because that that hunger could make you like get into a trade that let's say it's a vertical credit spread get into a trade it makes you you know seven hundred dollars and, and you you making that seven hundred dollars with the vertical credit spread you see that money hit, hit your account instantly right and so you're like oh i hit my income goal well yeah well we, the whole trading day hasn't gone by yet you might not hit your income goal. And if you don't, then that money is not going to be there at the end of the day because you got into a bad trade. Like, right, that even though that money hit your account right away, it, it didn't, the option didn't close out so that you can actually have that money. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that helped. But let me know your thoughts um, about what I said um, and any, any suggestions that you guys have if you're currently trading to manage your emotions. So we can help each other out within this community. Uh, feel free to comment if you had a great trading day, if you had a horrible trading day. Um, also, um, if you guys need any particular uh, video that you wanna know about my personal training journey, feel free to ask questions, I'm here. Like I said, I use the Invest with Terry method, so I can't teach you, but I have included a link to her course in my profile by, or my, in my description below if you guys want to learn more. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Have a good one.